Hi everybody, this video is looking at diffusion. So there are two kinds, diffusion or simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. So simple diffusion, first of all, um, simple diffusion is where you have a high concentration of particles in one particular area and a lower concentration in another area. And div diffusion just refers to the movement of those particles from the area of high to the area of lower concentration. Um, now, importantly, the particles don't know which way to go, of course, and they actually move randomly. So what we're talking about when we're going, saying from higher to lower concentration, we're talking about the net movement, the overall movement of particles. It will be in this direction. Now, in terms of biology, when we're talking about diffusion, we're usually talking about the movement um, into or out of a cell. So in cells, there's a cell surface membrane which separates the inside and the outside environments. So what you can see here is a phospholipid bilayer. So diffusion would happen when particles are able to move through the phospholipid bilayer down the concentration gradient. But that can't always happen. So for example, if you've got um, a molecule which is big, then molecules can be too big to be able to pass through the phospholipid bilayer. So bigger molecules cannot move into it or out of the cell by simple diffusion. The other problem is that the middle part of the phospholipid bilayer is hydrophobic because of the fatty acid tails. And that means that if you have um, molecules which are uh, hydrophilic, then they won't be able to pass through. So the hydrophobic center part of the bilayer is nonpolar and it's uncharged. So this molecule is able to move through because it's small enough and it is also uncharged, so it can go straight through. However, if you have a charged molecule, so for example an iron, something like sodium or chloride ions or even water, because water is polar, then they are not able to move straight through. So if you've got those sorts of molecules, so big molecules or charged and polar molecules, if they can't move through a uh, cell surface membrane by simple diffusion, how do they get through? Um, they move through by facilitated diffusion. So if we draw our phospholipid bilayer again, there it is. We'll start off with water. So water is a small molecule, but it's polar, it has a dipole. And therefore, um, water is repelled by the central part of our phospholipid bilayer. So in order to move from one side to the other, water has to move through a channel. Um, and what this is called is an aquaporin. So the purple part here represents a protein. So it's a, a channel protein. Um, it's a transport protein because water is transported from one side to the other. And it's actually a bit more like this in shape. So again, it's not, it's not a proper cylinder, it's not a tube, but this is sort of representative of the idea. So what you've got is um, a protein with a sort of channel in the middle, and that channel will have in it sort of a, a watery environment, um, very similar to the environment that you've got outside and inside the cell, okay, mostly water. So water is able to move through the central channel of our aquaporin, of our transport protein. Whenever water is in the centre of that aquaporin, it's protected from the hydrophobic um, fatty acid tails that are around it. The water that's in this channel here are never in contact with the hydrophobic part of the phospholipid bilayer. If you've got something like a sodium ion, it will also move through a transport protein. Um, what you can see here, this transport protein looks slightly different because transport proteins are specific. So aquaporins will let water through, um, but nothing else. This is a sodium channel and it will let sodium ions through, but nothing else. They have a specific shape. Often, um, especially when it's ions, these channel proteins are gated. So they will open or close in certain situations, depending on things like, for example, the voltage across the membrane. So at the moment, the gate's closed, so sodium ions are not able to pass through. 
something could happen which causes the gate to open and then sodium is able to move through. And because we're talking here about diffusion, then this is showing the movement of sodium ions down the concentration gradient. Other ions uh, would have channel proteins which are specific to them. So for example, this could represent a chloride ion channel. It's a different shape specific to chloride, but again, it's allowing chloride to move. In this case, it's moving out of the cell down its concentration gradient. So these are all channel proteins. We also have something called a carrier protein. Um, it's very similar, so it's a transport protein which spans the membrane. Um, but this time, um, when a molecule binds to it, it causes a change in the shape of the protein. So this could represent a glucose molecule. So it tends to be um, often bigger molecules that use carrier proteins. So you can see that the protein is sort of open on this side of the membrane, so the glucose can bind, but there's nothing here. It's the, 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 um, this side is closed. However, when the glucose binds, it causes a change in shape, and the other side of the carrier protein opens, which will allow the molecule to move through. So it's called the carrier protein because it, it changes shape and therefore sort of carries across the molecule. Now, all of these are facilitated diffusion. That means that for all of them, substances are moving down the concentration gradient. They are passive. There is no ATP being used. And they use transport proteins. Even with our carrier protein here, which changes shape, it does that passively. It does it just as a result of the binding and the effect that has on the transport protein molecule. There is no ATP used to move a, uh, a molecule across a transport protein um, if it's moving by facilitated diffusion. Okay, that's all. Thank you.